integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of e to the power of negative 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 dx. Whew. Okay. So we have a definite integral. So one thing you may say is that maybe we need to find the antiderivative. Maybe we need to anti-differentiate this antiderivative and use that to find the definite integral derivative. And the thing is, that's not going to work. That's not going to work in this case because antiderivative of this function is going to be non-elementary. It's not going to be elementary, non-elementary. And by elementary, I mean it's not going to be a function such as exponential or trigonometric or or some polynomial, or radical, or anything, or logarithmic. So elementary are the functions that you're used to. But the thing is, this is not going to be anti-differentiable over the elementary function. If you want to find the antiderivative, it's going to be non-elementary or something we are just not used to. So that's not the path to go to. Okay. So antiderivative is not going to work. So you may say, then how do we even evaluate definite integral? Is it even possible to evaluate a definite integral without anti-differentiating the quantity inside? And the thing is, yes, you can. And there are a myriad of advanced integration techniques that you can use. But in this case, in this case, you have to use the analytic method from multivariable calculus. And before you scream and turn off this video and run away, please, please don't. Multivariable calculus. You, even if you know some calculus one and two, my explanation and the logic behind it, I'm going to try to show you as much intuition as possible. It should be enough to keep you going. So you should be able to understand this, even if you don't understand, even if you don't know multivariable calculus so please please stay on so how we're going to do it is by examining a similar integral I'm going to show you how to integrate Gaussian integral before we attempt this question Gaussian integral and Gaussian integral is a very famous integral especially in statistics because it has a close connection with normal distribution and its integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx. And this fascinating integral actually evaluates to square root of pi. And you may say, why is it square root of pi? I'm going to prove it to you in this video. And using using the same technique that you're, you, you, we're going to use to evaluate Gaussian integral, we're going to use the very similar technique to evaluate the integral given to us. So let's begin with the Gaussian integral. And like this one, you're not going to be able to anti-differentiate e to the negative x squared over the elementary functions. So how do we how do we do it? So let me write it like this. So we wish to evaluate i, and i is just, in, just the Gaussian integral, from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx. And realize, you instead of writing it like this, you can also write this as integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative y squared dy. And you may say, why can we? Is that even allowed? And the answer is yes, because I this x is arbitrary. It, this thing doesn't have to be x. It can be z. It can be it can be u. It can be k. It can be it can even be a star. This thing can be integral of e to the negative star squared d star. It's all going to be the same because this x is some arbitrary variable. Arbitrary variable. You're just you're just using x just cause. There's no specific reasoning behind. There's nothing special about x. So you can switch that out with y and still have the same same integral. Okay. So we can write this as integral from e to the negative y squared dy. And you may say, how is that going to help us? What is special about that? And the thing is, using multivariable calculus, we can combine these two integrals in a way that's going to allow us to find the definite integral. So let me show you. 
So we are going to start by multiplying this integral and this integral. So we are going to get integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx times integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative y squared dy. So I'm just multiplying these two. And now I'm going to combine these two integrals like this. I'm going to go from negative infinity to infinity, another negative infinity to infinity, and I'm going to have e to the negative x squared and e to the negative y squared dx dy. Now don't be confused about this. These two are basically the same thing. But for this one, I'm just, I'm just combining them. Your x, your x is going from negative infinity to infinity. Your y is going from negative infinity to infinity. And the product within you are multiplying these two is going to now reside within the double integral. So I'm just writing it like this. Now how is this helping us? So let's try con to continue the simplification, you have integral from negative infinity to infinity, negative infinity to infinity, and you have e to the negative x squared minus y squared dx dy, because I'm just combining these two, e to the something times e to the something else is going to be e to the, and now you're going to add them up, so negative x squared minus y squared, and realize you can factor negative out to have x squared plus y squared inside. Now what do we do? Now, if you're used to polar coordinates, let me write that in blue, if you're used to polar coordinates, you may say x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared in polar coordinate. And just in case you do not know what polar coordinates are, let me explain really fast. Now the coordinate system you're probably used to is the Cartesian, Cartesian coordinate system, also known as rectangular also known as rectangular coordinate system, and this is when you have when you have x and y axis, and to find a point, let's say you're looking at point two one, point two one, you're going to say x is two and y is one. So this is the one you're used to, where you're going to give x comma y. Now polar coordinates, polar coordinate is when you're giving r and data. So let me show you. So polar coordinate. When you have a point, you're going to look at its angle. You're going to look at its angle from the positive, positive polar axis. So let's say the angle was pi over six. That was your angle. And now, and you're also going to look at the distance from the pole or the origin. And let's say this distance was, was five. Now this point is going to be written as five pi over six. So you're going to write it as r and theta. So theta is the angle, and r is the distance from the origin. So these are just two different ways of specifying points on a coordinate system. And realize that x squared plus y squared is r squared from Pythagorean theorem. So you have this part, this distance is going to be x, this distance is going to be y, and distance from the origin is going to be r. So using Pythagorean theorem to this, to this right triangle right here is going to get us x squared plus y squared is r squared. So one thing you may say is that maybe we can make conversion from Cartesian to polar coordinates to evaluate this integral and that's actually going to work. So let me show you how that's going to go. Let's begin with the quantity inside, this formula inside, e to the negative x squared plus y squared, that's going to change to r squared. And now let's look at the bounds. For this one, your x was going from negative infinity to infinity, and your y was going from negative infinity to infinity. So we were basically looking at your x stretching from negative infinity to infinity, and your y stretching from negative infinity to infinity. That's just the entire coordinate system. So that's what we are integrating over. And how can you write this with polar coordinates? Well, think about it like this. Your angle, you're going to rotate around from zero, from zero radians. We're using calculus, so let's stick with radians. You're going from zero radians, and you're going to rotate around, sweeping this coordinate system all the way to two pi radians. So your data is going from zero to two pi, just sweeping around. And while data is rotating, you want your r to stretch from zero 
from zero to infinity. You want your R to go from zero to all the way to infinity. So you're sweeping out the entire thing. So imagine theta rotating around from zero to two pi and R just sweeping from zero to infinity. So you're basically having your R is going from zero to infinity and your theta is going to go from zero to two pi. That's what corresponds with these bounds that we used to have. Now, another fundamental question is what's going to happen to dx dy? So let's think about that. How are we going to change dx dy? Now, dx dy was a small area. You had small dx, you had a very tiny dx, and you had a very tiny dy. You had a very tiny dy, and dx dy was getting you the area, area of this small, small, very small rectangle, this infinitesimal rectangle. So dA was dx times dy. Now, how is that going to change when you use polar coordinates? So let's, let me draw a polar coordinate. And let's say you're looking at, you're looking at some, for the polar coordinates, instead of rectangle, you're going to look at a part of a circle. So you're going to rotate around an infinitesimal angle. So let's say you're rotating around d data. So you're rotating around d data and you're looking at this very small piece this very small piece of circle so now that's going to be your da so we want to find the area of this very small tiny part let me let me reiterate that because that's important for rectangular you're finding area of this small rectangle for polar we're finding area of this very tiny very tiny part of a circle so how can we find area of this well, you may remember that that the the arc length arc length the length of this arc is equal to r times the angle. So in our case, d data, and that's just coming out straight out from definition of what radian measure is, because radian of data is defined as arc length arc length divided by the distance from the origin or the radius. You're just rearranging this, gets us r times d data is equal to arc length. So you know this, this arc length is going to be from trigonometry, this arc length is equal to r times d data. And we, we also have this tiny, very tiny difference of dr, very tiny difference in the distance from the origin. And realize, because dr and d data are very infinitesimally small this this very this this part of a circle is almost a rectangle it can be approximated as a rectangle because every quantity is extremely small so what's going to be the area of this where well, that's going to be width times height or base times height and that's going to be rd data times dr or rdr d theta so realize dx dy is going to change into rdr d theta R, D, R, D data, and realize something marvelous has happened because now you can actually integrate this quantity within because you have R squared and you have R, you have factor of R outside. So now you can make U substitution, U equals to negative R squared and DU is equal to negative 2R, D, R. And because, and because you have R outside, now this is actually going to work, beautiful. So now actually evaluate this. Now let's actually evaluate it. So now I'm going to separate this out once again. You have data going from 0 to 2 pi and d data. And you have r going from 0 to infinity of e to the negative r squared r dr. I'm just separating this. This part with e to the negative r squared r dr. I'm separating it out. And for d data, well, you can think of there being 1 multiplied to it. So I'm getting that out. So you have these two multiplied together, and we can integrate both of them. The first one is simply going to be 2 pi, because integrating 1 is going to get us data, and you're going from 0 to 2 pi. So this part is 2 pi. Now let's integrate this part. So we want to integrate e to the negative r squared r dr from 0 to infinity. Let's start by integrating e to the negative r squared r dr. Well, as I said, u is equal to negative r squared and du is equal to negative 2r dr. So we can make u substitution pretty quickly. e to the negative u, not just e to the u actually, e to the u. And we want to have negative 2r. So let's multiply by negative 2. 
divide by negative 2. So 1 over negative 2 and negative 2 r dr is going to become du. And that's simply negative 1 half e to the u. Okay, so we know we are going to get negative 1 half e to the u and our u is negative r squared. And your r is going from 0 to infinity. So you have 2 pi times when you plug infinity into it, when r becomes very small, you're going to have e to the negative something very large. And the same thing as 1 over e to the something large. And when you divide 1 by something extremely large, that's going to tend to 0. So when you plug infinity into it, you're going to get 0. Plugging 0 into it, e to the 0 power is 1. So you're going to get negative 1 half. And you want to subtract that. So you have 2 pi times 1 half which is equal to pi. So what was pi? Well, pi was this i times i. This, uh, this multiple of two, these two integrals came to be pi. So you know i squared, i squared is equal to pi. And now we can find i or the value of this integral. This integral is simply going to be i or negative or square root of pi is what I wanted to say. So now we know how to evaluate Gaussian integral. And now we are going to use the same technique to evaluate this integral that they gave to us. To begin with, I'm going to take out e to the negative 3 outside. So you have e to the negative 2x squared minus 5x. And you have e to the negative 3 dx. This thing is constant, so let's just bring it out. So we have e to the negative cubed integral of e to the negative 2 x squared minus 5x dx. Okay, let's continue. So e to the negative 3. And now, what do we want to do? Now we want to make this in the form integral of e to the negative u squared du because we know you can evaluate it to be square root of pi or, you, or we can use similar technique to evaluate it. So we want it to be e to the negative, may, maybe you're going to have some constant a, and now you want to have u squared. So you want this, this part to somehow evaluate to some quantity squared. And you may say, ah, we can do that by completing. We can do so by completing, by completing the square, by completing the square. So let's do that because completing the square is going to allow us to change this to something like Gaussian integral using u substitution. If you don't see it, you will see soon enough. So let's start by factoring out negative 2. So you have negative 2 times x squared plus 5 halves x. And to complete the square, we have to add 25 over 16. Oh, why are we adding 25 over 16? Well, you have x squared plus 5 over 2x. And now we want to turn this into x plus 5 over 4 squared because x plus 5 over 4 squared is x squared plus 5 over 2x plus 25 over 16. Realize we already have 5 over 2, but we need extra 25 over 16 to make this work. So we're going to add 25 over 16. And now you gotta subtract. Now because you're adding 25 over 16, now you gotta add now you gotta subtract 25 over 16 times negative 2. Because you're multiplying negative 2 to this quantity, you have to do the same thing to this quantity. And now what do we have? Well, you can break apart e to the negative 25 over 16 times negative 2. So let me bring that out. So you have e to the negative 3 and e to the negative 25 over 16 times negative 2. And you have this integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative 2 times, now you have x plus 5 over 4 squared dx. Now realize, we can make u substitution with u equals to x plus 5 over 4 to change this to e to the negative 2 u squared. That's why we wanted to complete the square. So now we have something very similar to Gaussian integral that we can use similar technique to evaluate. Okay. Now what do we have? Let's simplify this part for the sake of it. You have e to the negative 3 plus 25 over 8. That's equal to e to the 1 eighth. So you have e to the 1 eighth outside. How about inside? Well, let's try to evaluate this part. 
you have e to the negative 2. Now let's use u substitution. So you have u squared and du is equal to dx. So du. So how do we find this integral? Well, same technique. So you can think of there being the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative 2. Instead of u, we can just change that to x because just changing out the variable isn't going to affect it. So let me just do that. And e to the negative 2 y squared dy. And we can use the same technique. Let all of these be equal to y, i. And i squared is going to be combining them, negative infinity to infinity, of e to the negative 2 x squared plus y squared dx dy. I'm not going to spend as much time on this because we already spent enough time with Gaussian integral. And now you're going to rotate theta and go r from 0 to infinity, negative to r squared. And remember, dx dy is going to become r dr d data. And integral from 0 to 2 pi of d data is going to be 2 pi. And now you want to integrate this part, r dr. So you're going to have 2 pi times, that's going to be you can use u substitution. So u is equal to negative 2r squared. du is equal to negative 4r. So that's r dr. So you're going to get you're going to get e to the negative 2r squared over negative 4. And you're going to go from 0 to infinity. I'm skipping a few steps. And I'm not being as explicit, but I bet you guys can follow it if you so choose to. And plugging in infinity gets us 0. Plugging in 0 gets us 1 for this quantity. So you're going to get 0 minus negative 1 fourth. So you're going to get 2 pi times 1 fourth, or simply pi over 2. So you know pi over 2 is equal to i squared. So you know i is equal to square root of pi over 2. And we are basically done. So what's the, what's the value of this integral? Well, you have e to the 1 eighth. And this integral, this integral is going to come out to be square root of pi over 2. So that's our answer. e to the 1 eighth times square root of pi over 2. So let me write this down. So the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 dx is e to the 1 eighth times square root of, let me write that 8 properly, e to the 1 eighth times square root of pi over 2.